it's simple or reasonably simple spec. Um, there are a lot of things we want to build on Hot Topic. I think that's one of them, but I'm not convinced that we want to push things down too much. Sorry, just for some context, we've actually we discussed this a fair amount uh, when we uh, worked in IPLD initially, and we kept on trying to sort of shoehorn a lot of metadata into IPLD, and every time we tried that, it just got messy. Yeah, I think yeah, like, I think like, well, I'm hearing some echo from you now. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, so we need again, like this is so one of the things to discuss, like explain. Uh, to our users, like what are these two levels or even three levels of IPLD? And also like probably we need to find some names for all these levels. Um, like we eventually ended up with a, a format that like helps us traverse multiple types of like hash link data, but it doesn't do anything else at all. Like it doesn't include any selectors and it doesn't include any transformations. And those are the things that like, once we try to include those on the first iteration of IPLD, it became like really massive really, really fast. And that's when we agreed, okay, 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 like this can be a layer on top that we can like first implement the base, make it work, and then experiment on top and see what works and what not. Um, I think like there's a lot of issues with a lot of notes on this. Uh, we need to dig them up and bring them up to, to this chat, to, to the notes of this meeting. Cool. Uh, next up on my screen. Oh, I believe is it, did you finish, Johnny? Just I'm sure. Okay, awesome. Uh, next up is Nicola. Nicola, you muted. <laughs> when you are muted, you cannot explain. Nicola, I'll mute you. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I I'm going to take notes of myself in a bit because I know what I want to write. And I, what I'm interested in, uh, we were right, we started an effort last year, this year in, in February to write in the spec and it would be nice to finalize the effort after, sometime soon is that we got busy in something else. And what I've been, what I've been working on and, and I think that I would like to reboot maybe by giving what I've done to you guys mostly because I don't think I will have time in the next couple of months is to um, finish off the selector work, which is, uh, which has started a while ago. And the selector is literally, how can I select sub parts of the, of the um, someone is talking and how do I um, select sub parts of the graph um, in a, in a in an efficient way, but also in a provable way, and um, yes, that that's mainly it. That I think the selector there is an issue that I'm going to link in this uh, in this, and please chip in. And there is also some working code on how should we do the selectors. There are a few proposals. One is using regular expressions. One is using a subset of regular expression. One is using traditional um, XPath and or a even CSS selector, we got really crazy at some point. But I, it's really important to get that conversation going and get use cases for that. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, like in all of these things that we know that there has been some discussion somewhere, let's make sure that like they are all linked on the notes um, because we will need to come up back to those issues at some point. Cool, so next up on my screen is Erman. Erman, oh, hi, Vizio. Uh, Erman, you're next, can I go? Yeah, uh, well, I, I was super resting Go and, and got up to speed with the Go IPLD Ethereum plugin. Uh, Steven was my uh, reviewer. <laughs> and, and I finally managed to build a resolver for the um, construction tree because the Ethereum the blockchain has three, three um, Berkeley Patricia trees, the storage, the state, the uh, transaction, and transaction receipts. So the next step is the real goal, which is import the whole Ethereum blockchain is around 250 gigabytes into several servers, and then use the plugin to resolve over the data and, and be able to use real late clients. So, so my goal in this meeting is get around all the interface, all the roadmap of the 
the project to do the right implementations. As far as far as now, to avoid silly question, I, I didn't do a lot, but I need to understand resolve, resolve links, we, uh, all the right uh, vision you have guys so to do the right implementations. For now, for example, the three I do is just in one level and the resolving is very intuitive, but I want to have the real rules, the real, the real plans you have so to comply and, and not just delivering roadblocks, but real resolving and use the power of the market forest. Hmm? Got it, got it, thank you. Um, yeah, we definitely need to start creating more examples that are more than just like fetching blocks. Um, and like a, a great example, I guess, right now is oh, Unix and Fastix Health, Fastix Health because now it uses the DAG resolver uh, to, to, to find its blocks and to traverse through. But, but like still, like it's not very intuitive to go through the code. Steven? Uh, well, this actually goes back to my point where uh, the Go IPFS, um, or sorry, the uh, Go IPLD APIs are really, they don't follow IPLD very closely. It's like they have really funky interfaces that just don't match the concept of IPLD. Mm -hmm. um, like there is a links method that returns what are effectively IPFS link objects uh, that just make no sense in IPLD land. Like they have names and sizes and whatnot. Got it, got it. Yeah, at some point, yeah, well, let's finish the roundup. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll go, go quickly into deep conversations. Cool, so the next on my screen is Viso. I, I'm not sure if Viso is still here. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Viso, okay. you are muted? Okay. Yeah, I just needed to unmute. Yeah, just say hi. Just I uh, wanted to figure out what's going on with uh, IPLD these days. Because uh, you know, like I, I'm looking for projects to to add on. You know, like so I'm looking for things to get my hands on. You know, start awesome. randomly hacking on stuff. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely welcome. Um, feel free to post questions. Right. Sorry There's if I no disappear one. from the screen. Uh, sorry if I disappear from the screen occasionally. I'm writing an email on my laptop on the same time. So like, <laughs> yeah, feel free. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Cool. So next up is Dimitri. Dimitri, share on the site. Sure. Um, similar to Visual, I'm just ramping up on on IPLD and trying to kind of um, branch out to other areas outside of loop P2P uh, about where I can apply and solve out. Awesome, thank you. Cool, so um, only three people left. Razmu Serik, did I say that correctly? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm just diving into it, learning more about it, so yeah. Cool, okay. Um, next is Lucas. Yeah, so I am working on integrating the JS API with Go and to make it work. And currently I'm stuck on the IPLD API not being like too good on the Go side. And uh, there are some problems uh, like the decentralization and Sometimes will be like uh, there, there are problems with types on the JavaScript side. That's uh, like the buffer versus uh, string is resolved on the JS side, but we still have like uh, the numeric types. So JavaScript uses floats by default, and that is going to be quite a problem with Cibor. And I'd like to get some like ideas to how to solve this. I do think that uh, technical point. Yeah, and someone is typing and clip that this really sucks when two people type. So I was taking notes and someone is typing and I cannot take notes anymore. If uh, I, maybe can you let's let's edit that clip pad uh, after we are done. I, I don't know. It's really odd. It never happened before, but I started typing and someone else, I saw someone else typing and all of my sentences got mixed up. I see. 
Yeah. That sounds like a bug in Cooper. And yeah, sorry for that, Nicola. If someone is like typing at the group path, like what's at Nicola, take notes. And then like if you want to add stuff on the end, what, what's in the for the end? Uh, I by was, the way, uh, will stop and, and type later. Thank you. Awesome. By the way, we have like a surprise scale up on group path <laughs> uh, from TJDNS. I don't know if he's here on this call, but he's on the group path. So <laughs> uh, I wonder. Yeah, I go go for it. <laughs> yeah, definitely leave a message for him. Cool. So next is okay, Lucas. You were um, like you were finishing up. Did you share everything? Yeah. Yeah, mostly. Like I like to hear some discussion on the on how to resolve this number problem. Yeah, it sounds like what Stephen is working on will solve all your problems as well once it's finished. Uh, there's a bit more to it as well. There's also the fact that, uh, again, we need some way like in JSON itself to distinguish between bytes and strings and uh, between like uh, floats, ints, and whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to need some way of adding types to JSON. Uh, I think the way we'll, or one way I want to do this is um, uh, to basically use the same thing we're doing with CIDs where we have a special object and say like slash type instead of just slash. Uh, I, I, there's an issue about this somewhere, but I can't find it. Interesting. Uh, I have some other ideas, but like let, let's finish the roundup. So like Martin is the last one. Um, Martin, see you there. Hi. Yep. <clears throat> um, okay. So uh, I've been working on a mixed bag of things. So one thing that I have going is um, the uh, IPLD JSON graph builder. Um, and one thing that that has ran into is like when I resolve um, Cbor nodes, um, uh, there's n no nice way to get the Cbor node into JSON. So it'd be nice to standardize like a to JSON uh, uh, method on um, different resolvers. So maybe making it part of uh, the utils. Sounds good. Uh, Sounds can good. you guys hear me? Yeah, we could hear um, you. Uh, go ahead. Then the other thing uh, I had a question about is, um, yeah, with the work of, with the graph builder, um, I was wondering if there's any interest to sort of like standardize uh, uh, a uh, adjacent representation of uh, a, par a partial graph where y you leave out the intermediary hashes um, and include the encoding information uh, all in JSON. Um, mm -hmm. And then recently I've been, I implemented a uh, binary um, radix tree. <clears throat> on a uh, type of uh, graph builder. And this opened up an interesting question as to where uh, things like this should live on the stack because uh, I'm not sure if it should go under, uh, it should be a resolver itself or should live on top of um, I IPLD. So really quickly, uh, uh, a radix tree allows you to, it's just like a key value store. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the the padding um, doesn't, you, you have to use it through the radix tree. You can't pad directly through. Uh, um, it's like implementing a binary or, you know, some tree structure, search tree structure over the top of, IPLD, uh, and it may make sense to put that move that kind of stuff uh, to resolver directly. Um, yeah, uh, and then the last thing I sort of messed around with is um, performance issues. Uh, I did a bunch of benchmarking on the uh, radix tree. Uh, well, the whole point of a binary radix tree is it generates um, proofs for uh, key 
uh, for values that are much smaller than uh, like Ethereum's hexadecimal radix tree. Um, and I found some major performance issues when uh, when writing large amounts of keys, and reading large amounts of keys. Um, and yeah, I also opened the issue about making a change to uh, the way uh, the resolvers serialize and then hash things, so we don't have to hash things twice. Um, just yeah, some some OCD performance stuff. Um, yep. Uh, one big uh, plus. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, so, so Nicola first, and then Stephen, like. Just give me a sec. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. So, Nicola. Hello. So, I have um, I have a little, little parenthesis on the work on the Radix tree and the pathing. I think this is also something that we started a conversation on a long time ago, and for a year or so. And this is called the IPLD transformation. I don't know if Stephen also wanted to uh, mention that, but um, to me, the the, the simplest IPLD will will give you uh, some form of pathing which is the basic path scheme that you will get with standard IPLD. So if your structure is a binary radix tree, then every single time you will have to do slash something, slash little letter, slash little letter. But the idea is that we, we want to allow you to do, uh, to, to avoid doing this very complex uh, slash, slash, slash everywhere by creating some transformation over the graph. So that for a particular path, the resolver, as you said, is going to read, is going to read and reinterpret what the answer should be without going on really low level as it is now. So I, this is also another, I'm writing down conversation that we should have in the future. And this is like uh, one big one. Yeah, yeah. So right now is like super simple for me to implement it on top of IPLD graph builder, but that means like now, yeah, now I can't, I would like to be able to also use like graph builder and other just um, IPLD libraries to resolve these paths directly, yes. right? I, um, ideally, ideally, you don't so, have to this. Yeah. All right, Stephen. So, so ideally, oh, I guess it should be a new result, right? Sorry? So ideally, I guess it should be a new new resolver then, right? Yes. So uh, yeah, here's the. Here, I'll just drop. I'll drop a link to what I wrote in the notes. Do do do. Um. So radix typing. Radix tree. And then I, I a link to a sort of a spec of the tree, but. There's also the implementation there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute. So, I didn't link to the right thing. Sorry. Oh no, sorry, that's not. I linked to Graph Builder. Uh, sorry, pre coffee. Um, oh, here we go. Here's the quick link. There we go. Um, yeah, the, so one thing that would be nice to know though, um, just on the proposed changes I made for like serialization and hashing um, and the utils, um, if I made PRs for those, would that be okay? Or is someone like working yeah. on that? That, that's basically on me, like the getting back on this PR. I've been like trying to get back to my backlog this week. I've got most of the stuff, but I missed that. Sorry for that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I promise to do it this week. <laughs> I'll do it after these calls. <laughs> it's just like I, I think like what you did is like done. Like I don't have any other comment. And and yeah, thank you for like doing all the benchmarking and catching it problem. Yeah, no problem. Okay. I'll get back to you then. Cool. So, 
Yeah. Um, no, Stephen. Stephen uh, is in raised. Sorry. Uh, never mind. I'm, I'm just talking in the chat. I'm just writing the uh, text in the notes. Oh, all right. Thank you. So uh, now that we view this round robin and like everyone shared their uh, wishes and blockers, uh, there is like two trends here, I think. Or at least like at least first two trends. Like people want to figure out like the interfaces internally. There's a lot of refactoring that needs to happen in Go IPFS. And that once trickled to the uh, public APIs will save a lot of time and work from what Lucas is doing. The, the other thing is how to build these graphs. Like right now, we have talked about the concept called layouts. And layouts would be like what Graph Builder does and what UnixFS engine does, which is like you keep ingesting files uh, and like um, offloading them and like creating the ashes and preserving the ashes. And at some point in time, you flush these files, right? Like you, you have like this tree in memory and then you just like flush it out because like the tree is big enough that like it starts consuming a lot of memory or because like you just want to um, checkpoint it. Like you want to be able to uh, just flush it to disk so that's like if your process dies for some reason, you can pick it up from where you left off. And like if you don't flush it, you don't know where it was. This was also like, an issue that we had with MFS. Like so MFS keeps a, a virtual directory tree structure in your IPFS node. And when you add like thousands of files, and, uh, like thousands of directories, at some point the node might run out of memory because like it, it is something that we still need to, to solve in IPFS, but it might. And so we had to create mechanisms to go in the middle and just like flush the entire tree in MFS so that like if the node crashed, we would be able to pick up from there. So, so that, that tells me that there is an interesting exercise to do, which is grab graph builder that Martin has been developing. Um, and it's like very robust and like 100% test coverage and so on. And like try to develop the same graph building thing that we do in UnixFS with graph builder from Martin. This would give us two things. First, like it will like converge in the way that that creating the tree in memory works. Um, it will use the same language. And second, it will enable UnixFS to both create um, trees with paragraphs or with Daxibot, right? Like it will enable us to, to use both formats. Uh, and I think that would be pretty interesting. Um, okay, yeah, everyone, does this make sense for everyone? Any, any comments? Cool, so that, that sounds like a oh, uh, uh, Yeah, go ahead. I have one quick question. Uh, I forgot to mention this. Uh, another thing I've been working on on a PLD Craft Builder is to add caching. So if like I do a tree of a graph and then I do a flush, it won't actually it don't change anything. Or I change some nodes, it will only write the it will only write back the nodes that I change. Um, and I was, but before I did that, I wanted to make sure that uh, like the lower layers weren't already doing something like that, or um, if that should be higher handled at a lower level. So let me try to understand if I let me let me repeat what you said just to see if I understand. Like you, when you do flesh on Graph Builder, you you create the vag nodes. And you tell the resolver, the IPLD resolver, to store them. Like you do puts, right, per per node. Yeah. Yeah. And and but what like, is? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, but uh, if if the node didn't change, I could like skip that. Oh, I see. So yeah, that that right now, at least from memory, I think like if we have a node that I want to store. Because like you mm -hmm. already have to pay the cost of hashing the thing, like we are like hashing the thing and trying to store it to to the repo. And if I remember correctly, we actually don't check if we have the node in the repo or not. But the thing is, uh, it, it's a trade-off, and it depends on like if it's fast to write or fast to read. Because if you if you say, oh, in the repo I already have this hash then you are trusting that the data that's on the repo is actually um, correct. Like there was no, um, no damage to that data. So what 
you need to do exactly is read the data that you have through the repo, hash it also, and then compare the hashes and say, oh, like, yeah, I, I do have this store, if it's correct. The, the solution that we have right now is every time we want to write something, we always hash it to the right. We don't confirm if the data that was there was correct or not. Um, right. Yeah, so the, last three dots. yeah the, the way I would implement it is um, keep a weak map between all the leaf nodes and the original hashes. Yeah. And then when flushing the graph, if a leaf node uh, hash matches uh, the cached hash, then yeah. uh, I would return false, and that entire branch underneath it would uh, not be rehashed. That we can do that. So the repo and the block service has no concept of like a tree. It only understands blocks. So that would mm -hmm. definitely need to be implemented on IPLD level. It can be on the resolver though. Like it can be the resolver understanding that there are trees and creating that weak map, and then we can pass like it just options when we are doing put, so that it knows it's part of like a certain tree or, or something. Uh, yeah, I'll be totally fine to include that as a feature of the IPLD resolver slash service. Um, yeah, by the way, like it might be confusing for Go people. So IPLD resolver, there are IPLD format resolvers in Chessland, and there is IPLD resolver, which is the package that implements the IPLD service, which, which is the same thing in Go. We need to fix timing. Just, just, just <laughs> like so. When I say I build a resolver, I'm I'm talking about I build a service. Everyone is the same page. Um, yeah. Do you have that implemented already, Martin? Um, I, I have it partially implemented in Graph Builder, and then I was like, hmm, maybe this should actually belong somewhere lower level in the stack. Um, so I uh, think what I sh the path forward here might be to look at Resolver a little bit more and see where I could add this to Resolver. Yeah, yeah. If you could like open a PR and like start working on that, uh, I'm sure mm -hmm. we can figure out uh, how the API should look like. And okay. Um, the I, that I, already implemented. Yeah, go ahead. I think a, a prerequisite PR though is going to be benchmarks for the resolvers because like this really came out of me benchmarking the Radix Merkle tree, trying to improve the performance there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll create some benchmarks directly for resolver and then then do a PR for uh, caching. I think. So uh, a question there um, and. And then probably we should like move to the other big question posted by Stephen. So, would you like to lead the effort on IPLD resolver benchmarking and improving its performance? Also, uh, so like basically pushing all the code that you have developed so far, understanding what are the biggest pain points, and then like kind of like paving the path to for everyone that's contributing to IPLD to understand what needs to be done to improve the performance of IPLD. Uh, mm -hmm. plus, plus, I know that like, you have been working a lot in WebAssembly, and like we have discussed in the past, like doing all the resolvers and some of the parts um, of like IPLD in WebAssembly so that we could reuse resolvers across languages. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I guess like that would be an excellent excuse slash uh, an excellent way to convince everyone to just like start adopting WebAssembly for IPLD. Uh, and start developing those resolvers with WebAssembly. Um, right now, we are also, like, especially Prito, which is not here, we start, started implementing some crypto primitives with um, Rust and like compiling it to ASM.js because I, we mm -hmm. want to improve the, the crypto performance in JSAPFS. It's right now like 80% of the time that's spent by JSAPFS nodes is on SecIO and like increasing the packets uh, on the browser. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a ridiculous chunk. Uh, so if we can like join the efforts together and like just level up the crypto primitives, use WebAssembly for everything, improve how IPLB uh, works and make it more performant, that would be awesome. Would you like to to, to lead the charge there, or does it does this sound good? Does it sound reasonable? Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, could you open that issue for me though, uh, yeah. for the the Wasm stuff? So don't forget. 
Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And okay. really quickly on benchmarking, there's there's two big bottlenecks. There's the one with the hashing that I keep bringing up, but the other big one is somewhere in uh, JS IPFS. I'm pretty sure it's with the the the, uh, the file system repo, um, mm-hmm. but I need to dig into that a bit more. Okay, okay. So I'll open the issue about like the plans for Wasm and like benchmarking and what is happening also for Sakayo. Uh, and then we will just use that issue to continue the discussion. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, so I would like if like if there are no more questions on this topic, I would like to move now to Stephen's uh, initial question, which is like APIs and integration. Stephen, like, would you like to like just bring up the problem a little bit more in like with more depth, and like explain what you're thinking in the plan? I'd be unmuted. Uh, which particular part again? So, like, so like you say, you say, oh, I hear echo from myself. Is it good now? Okay. Uh, you say that like you need to do a lot of refactoring in Go IPFS uh, mm-hmm. to make IPLD work in the Unix FS engine, to make IPLD work for BitSwap and future graph swap, to, to make IPLD work for the APIs that Lucas is implementing and so on. And I think like this is like a lot of work. And we probably should have a way to understand what we are talking about. Like, wh- what are the pieces in the code base that we need to change, and why? Uh, and so that, like, we, we used to do this often, right? Like, there was a lot of changes in the early beginning of IPFS because we also figured out a lot of things. And like, me and Jeremy and Juan would just like sit down and like discuss. Okay, this part needs to change because it's consuming that same API. And this part needs to change because whatever. Uh, and, and like, as we reviewed like the the dependency tree, we also realize, oh, we can also include this and that and that. So yep. it would be awesome if you could do that work now for this endeavor that you're pushing. Yeah, I, I actually just posted an issue on IPFS notes to cover some of this. Um, yeah. It got rather large, uh, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll continue working on that. That doesn't actually include a lot of the other IPLD related stuff, like the, or modifying the actual IPLD node APIs. Uh, that is mostly in a, a local branch of my computer um, that I need to now like uh, clean up a bit. Uh, but it's almost like all these APIs are related. So we have to, I first of all, want to discuss like how we're going to reorganize uh, like block store and uh, DAG service and stuff like that, all those APIs. So. Mm-hmm. Um, are you familiar with all the, the interface like the only format specs and so on? I've seen them. I remember discussing them when we were working them originally, but I, I don't know how, or sorry, are those like are those the actual ones we're using in JSFFS? Like we, we stuck with the originals or okay. Well we the, the interface IP, IPLD format is used by every single resolver. That means like Dexibor, Dex Parablab, all the dream resolvers. Um, right now. Like it basically explains like what are the interf- the, the calls that need to be there in order for IPFS to okay. understand the format. Okay, so I'll look at that. Um, I, I can't remember precisely how it worked. Uh, my main issue here is like we have in Go IPFS we have like a block service and a block store and a, a DAG service, uh, but the um, the block service doesn't really serve much of a use uh, other than like integrating with the the um, uh, the exchange. Yeah, exactly but like, uh, yes, exactly. but the problem is the exchange it can't actually go there in the future because the exchange needs access to IPLD objects, no, not uh, blocks because mm-hmm. it's like integrated with um, IP, sorry, to have IP LD selectors, it needs to understand IP LD. So yeah. it actually needs to go up a level on top of a DAG service or something like that. However, now we also need a distinction between like services that simply store IP LD nodes. I'm gonna call them uh, uh, like node resolvers or node stores and things that actually understand like querying IP LD. Those would be like the actual DAG stores. Uh, these things would understand IP LD selectors. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so it's, yeah, I think we are in the same page there. Um, and interested to hear questions if people have them. But like right now, from all the discussions on like all the development progress in just IPFS, we also have the block service. The block service is like a distinct veneer that like plugs the block store with the exchange. And that's because like BitSwap historically has only exchanged blocks yep. and not like paths. Um, 
we had in the past the DAX service, but like when we moved to IPLV, um, I replaced the DAX service with the IPLV resolver. And yep. the, it's like almost just a name change and an inter interface change because the IPLV resolver brought, this, um, brought the, the concept of like local resolvers, which were like individual format resolvers. Uh, that like then would plug in together, and I think that's like what you call the the new IPLV stores. Um, uh, in, in actually, in, in Go IPFS, uh, there's still a DAG service. All that does is store IPLV nodes as opposed to blocks. Basically, it stores parse nodes. Yeah. Um, and then there are functions that perform resolving um, yeah. that are kind of haphazard actually at the moment. Uh, but so th that's approximately how that works. Um, yeah. The, DAGs, or sorry, the um, DAG sort I'm thinking of is there specifically needs to exist to uh, execute IPLD query, or sorry, yeah, IPLD uh, selectors. Uh, if we also put IPLD transforms, that would be done at that level or at that layer as well, probably. And at that point, probably write or, um, uh, like resolution functions in terms of IPLD selectors and IPLD um, transforms, in which case we don't actually need special, we would not need special code for that, theoretically. Yeah. Um, but it depends on a lot of other issues. So what does it sound like? Um, is that, yeah, so like when IPLD was implemented in GoIPFS, the transition from DAG service to like IPLD service didn't really happen. Like it just got like an hybrid. Uh, and it did sound like somehow, like the JS IPFS implementation might be a little bit more towards the future that you are looking for in Go yep. IPFS. Yep. Um, and so it would be very useful. And I can like just guide you through the th all the things I implemented in JS IPFS. Okay. Just Should like to get your understanding. Yeah, like to get your understanding there. Because like I think like once you understand how it works in JS IPFS, you probably will like identify problems that you can like improve. Mm -hmm. But you might also get uh, like like just help from mapping what is implemented in yep. JS lands to go like. Yeah. And, well, and what, yeah, go ahead. Uh, one thing I would like to change, I don't know how this works in IP, or IP uh, sorry, in JS uh, yeah. land, is that um, I don't think bit swap should be like a special service. It should effectively, like it should be two pieces. There's the piece that watches the DAG uh, and uh, serves up blocks. And then there's mm -hmm. the piece that says effectively a DAG store or a block store, or whatever you want to call it. Like it, yeah. it's, it, it literally just exports the block store interface and you just ask it for blocks. Um, it's like it, it, at least in Go IPFS, the way it's implemented is effectively two different services that do two very different things, but then we mash them all together and sort of stick it in this weird spot and just, yeah. it doesn't make sense. I agree. Um, the only thing that I would argue is that like going like doing the full transition, so like going from DAG service that's now very weird and wonky, the integration part, uh, to like the, uh, IPLD service plus um, graph swap. And, and I say here graph swap, not that we are going to have bit swap and graph swap at the same time, it's just like a way to say yeah. that it's going to be an exchange that like supports selectors and paths. Yeah. Uh, like it might be too much, and like it might be more wise to do first the migration to IPLD service, and therefore propagating the APIs that would enable like the HTTP API to then send the nodes in their raw format in instead of like trying to export everything to JSON. And then, like, oh, I, I, I agree, it. sorry. My, my, my point here is more that uh, I think we need a roadmap like where we're gonna put everything so that yeah. we like, we don't just like start making changes then have to undo all of our changes again and again and again and again. I agree, we... I agree. Uh, I'm happy to work on that video if you want. Like okay. if you want to, if you want like to lead the effort or like lead together, I'm I, happy. I would love to have other people commenting on it, or uh, helping me design things and answer questions. There is a, uh, I, again, I wrote up an issue in the IPLD notes uh, repository. Sorry, at the FS notes repository that's rather large. Um, mm -hmm. if you want to try reading that? You can. I will reread it once I've gotten a bit more sleep because it may not make any sense, but <laughs> most of it was written while I had sleep. I, I finished it up last night. So. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, cool, cool. That, that sounds good. So we have five minutes left. Um, does, is there any question that someone has that hasn't asked and it's kind of like really urgent? Or should we just identify the to-dos and like meet next week?
I'll, I'll take from the silence that we should just identify the to-dos in the next week. And I'll just like go through the notes here that Nicola uh, so kindly uh, taken for us. And, and yeah, so like we need to set up a call to discuss IPLV and JSONLV. Probably before the call would be good to have a proposal in an issue, like just like a context journey. Uh, so that people can read, and like you, we can even like use this call to discuss this. Um, also, it'd be great if you could show like a prototype of that, like what we can use from JSON LD land that by adding the context key to IPLD land would be possible. That is not possible right now. Um, if you could like take some notes there and like post it as an issue, post it on the same issue, that would be helpful. Okay, sure thing. Awesome. Um, I build the transformation resolver. We might be able to use I build the selector stuff here. Uh, this doesn't sound like an action item. Nicola, do you want like to modify this one? Um, can you repeat again? Sorry. Uh, you the second line nine nine. Uh, I feel the oh now you deleted it. <laughs> so no, someone deleted it. I okay. didn't. Okay. okay, so there's I build the transformation and resolver. Yeah. And I guess like you mean just bring up the issues and like mark down files and like update them. Is that is that like you what you want uh, to do? Yeah. Okay. And okay, so I'll I'll talk to you people here. So yeah. And that's sweet. Anyway, cool. Um figure out caching. And I think this is Martin and me. I'll put here the GitHub's. Uh, open issues for Martin. Open issues for Martin. Uh, there was many, I guess, like one of them. Is the one. Go ahead. We are the reviewing one. the notes. Okay. Okay, got it. Into open there was And I guess it's more like me. To you, PRs to the <laughs> I guess yeah. That's the subtask there. David, to all through. Yeah, okay, cool. So, did we miss to capture something here on the studios for next week? All right. Look, looks uh, good here. Yeah, thank you. I think this was productive. Uh, there's a lot of still surface area to go through, like a lot of things on that issue that we haven't talked about. But it seems like we have some to-dos and like people are working on some stuff that we can achieve. Uh, and yeah, let's keep this meeting happening. Like, so I actually asked in the beginning of the meeting, should we do this weekly or bi-weekly? Are we good with weekly? Or, so, yeah. Is, any, is anyone opposed to doing it weekly? I'd say like that. Uh, I like weekly. It would be nice to okay, check awesome. in again. Awesome. Okay, let's keep it weekly. All right. I guess that's all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, all right. See, see you guys next week. Yeah. yeah. Have a great rest of the week. Enjoy your weekend. And bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.